Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we will be seeing how the ancient Babylonians represented natural numbers. Babylon was one of the earliest major cities. It was located near the current city of Baghdad in Iraq. The Babylonians were among the earliest leaders in the advancement of mathematics. They developed the first place value numeration system at least as far back as 3100 BCE. They had an early advanced culture. Uh, they were among the earliest leaders in various advancements of mathematics. But this development of a place value system was a particularly important development. In a place value system, a limited number of symbols called digits are used to, to be able to represent numbers of arbitrarily large size. Place value systems allow the use of a small number of symbols to represent arbitrarily large numbers without a lot of repeated symbols. This corrects the biggest problem that we have with Egyptian and Roman numerals. This makes the most important advancement in early numeration systems. In a place value system, there's a base that represents the size of the groupings. We use a base of 10 in our modern Hindu Arabic numerals. The Babylonians, however, used a base of 60, so it's called a sexagesimal system. If you count the placeholder for zero, we need the same number of digits as the base. In our modern base 10 system, we use these digits right here, what we call 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 in English. If we were to use a base 5 system, we would only need five digits, starting with zero. So that would be zero, one, two, three, four, and that's it, one, zero, one, two, three, and four. A base 12 system would need 12 digits. Zero, we could use our standard one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we'd need some symbol for 10 and some symbol for 11, perhaps T and E, or maybe A and B. The base 60 Babylonian numbers would then require 60 different digits. Now, that's a lot of digits, but it turns out that they were able to represent this with a relatively uh, small number of symbols, actually just two symbols if you don't count the symbol for zero. There's a symbol that looks kind of like this that they use to represent one and a symbol like this that would represent 10. And for the numbers between 1 and 59, they combine these symbols in an additive fashion, somewhat like, like in um, you know, Egyptian numerals or Roman numerals, to create the different digits from 1 to 59. But once they got to a 60th one, they would regroup, and it would make 1 in the next digit over. At first, the Babylonians did not have a symbol for zero. It was added later, but that when they did that, uh, using that symbol as a placeholder, that completed all 60 digits. Now, in the following slide, I have all 60 digits. Uh, I constructed these actually in Geometer Sketchpad and then made them into pictures. So they're now individual picture files. So for my students, if you'll take the notes that I give you, uh, you can that give you as a word file, you can actually click on those individual uh, things as pictures and you know copy and paste them to work with Babylonian numerals. Here they are. Here's the table. Uh, this is the symbol for uh, zero that was added later. These are all 60 of the digits used in Babylonian numerals. They're all built out of these two symbols, the symbol for one and the symbol for 10, but they're combined additively. So Put two of the ones together, you get a two. Three of those, you get a three. Four could be arranged like this. Four units, then five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten then look like this. Eleven would be a ten and a one, like that. Twelve would be a ten and two ones, and so forth. And you can see those all the way here. Um, Potentially, these could possibly be arranged in some other order, some other arrangement, and they would still mean the same thing. But I think, from what I've seen, I think this is at least one way that they were arranged quite often in their uh, Babylonian numbers. So, 
these things then ultimately each one of these things becomes a single digit. Then these digits are combined in a place value system to be able to write numbers of any arbitrarily large size. So like our modern numerals, each digit represents the number of groups of the next place value to the right. The size of the groups is the size of the base, 60. So here we have a two digit number. If we start on the right, those are units. So here we have 10, 11, this is 11 single items. So 11 times one is actually 11 items. This one here is one, but it's in the second place. So it's one group of 60. So we have regrouped uh, those to become one group of 60. So here what we have is 60 plus 11 is 71. It's just be how we would write it in our uh, uh, Hindu Arabic numerals. In other words, one group of 60 and 11 singles is the same as seven groups of 10 and one single. Here the space indicates separation of digits. The digits get bigger in place value as we go from right to left. Um, okay. So see if you can convert this Babylonian numeral to modern Hindu Arabic form. See if you can work it out yourself and come back and check your answer in a minute. Press pause now. Okay, so starting on the right, this is just units. There are 31 of those. Could say 31 times 1 or just 31. Or if we wanted to say 31 times 60 to the 0th power because 60 to the 0th power is just 1. Either way, that's just 31 items. The next one has, that's the symbol, the digit for what we would call 4 in English. So, but it's, but it's in the second place, so that's four groups of 60. Four times 60 is uh, 240. This is 10, but 10 what? 10 groups of what would be here? Well, that's a, each one of those is a group of 60. And that's a group of 60 of those, so it's a group of 60 60s. So in other words, uh, we could think of this as written as individual blocks here. These could be a, a stack of 60 high, this would be a, a flat or square of 60 by 60s. So this is one flat uh, square of 60 by 60. And there, there are 10 of those, actually, not just one. So it's 10 60 squares. Well, 60 square is 3600 uh, or 3600 in Arabic numerals, Hindu Arabic numerals. 10 of those would be 300. Uh, Oh, that's wrong. That's 36,000. Let me correct that. Okay, and then this last group, there are two, two of this group, but how big are the groups? Well, if these are single blocks and these are a stack or, or uh, that's 60 long, this is a square of 60 60s. So it's 60 by 60 or 3,600 individual blocks. This is a bigger cube which is 60 by 60 by 60, 60 flats stacked up 60 high. So each, so each one of these little symbols right here represents a group of 216,000, and we have two of those. So 2 times 216,000 is 432,000. Okay, and then you add all that up, you get 468,271. So this uh, Babylonian numeral would be this numeral in Hindu Arabic form. So it might be useful to think about what each of those place values means uh, in in uh, Hindu Arabic form. So the first place value is, is, uh, is 60 to the zeroth power, or just one single item each. The second place value from the right then is uh, 60 to the first power, or 60. The third place value is 60 square, or 3,600. The the next one, the fourth place value from the right, is 60 to the third, which is here. And there you see 60 to the fourth, fifth, and sixth, and seventh. So you notice that it doesn't take too many digits here with the base as big as 60 
to get to a real a really large number, right? Um, notice it to get to a number, all two digit numbers uh, would be, you know, well, they can get up to a number 2,100, 215,999 with only two digits. So you can see the one of the advantages there is, is they can get to large numbers very quickly, uh, whereas it takes us uh, more digits in our system. Now let's try converting the other direction. Convert the following Hindu Arabic numeral to a Babylonian numeral. Okay. And the number is... So the number is uh, 7,895. All right, let's think about this a minute. What is it going to take to do this? We have to see how we would group that, uh, not as it's grouped here in, in Hindu Arabic numerals as, as five singles, nine tens, eight flats of 10 by 10 or 100, or seven cubes of 10 by 10 by 10 or seven thousands, but rather regroup it the way Babylonians would do it. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we see the value is more than 60 square, which is 3,600 but less than 60 cubed, which is 216,000. So we're not going to need that that uh, that digit. We're going to just need three digits. We'll need singles, 60s, and 60 squares, but not 60 cubes. So first, let's take the largest group, 60 square. How many of those are going to be there? Well, we just divide. We take 7,895 and divide it by 60 square, or in other words, divide it by, by 3,600. We get two remainder 695. I'll leave the details of that division to you. You could do it by long division by hand. You could use a calculator. Uh, but anyway, we get that. We get that there's two groups of that size, 3,600 and 695 remaining. So that gives us two groups uh, at the largest level. That gives us these two right here and the biggest place value in the third digit over. Then we need to see how we take how many groups of 60 are in that remaining 695. So we divide that by 60 and you get 11 or remainder 35. Again, you could do it by hand. Uh, you could, with a long division algorithm, you could do it with the calculator. So we get 11 groups of 60, that's represented by this symbol, and 35 units, the remainder, is right there. So we see that 7,895 is two groups of 60 square plus 11 groups of 60 plus 35 singles and then we've got a digit for 2, a digit for 11, a digit for 35. Of course the digit for 35 is made up of three tens and five ones. So I've got a few questions for you here I'd like you to consider. Which is more like our modern numerals? Egyptian, Roman, or Babylonian numerals? If you've been watching the previous videos in this playlist, we've talked about those other systems. Why do you think that they chose a base of 60? What are some advantages of base 60 over base 10? What are some advantages of base 10 over base 60? And then how about this one? Place value was a remarkable innovative insight. However, we've surely completely abandoned Babylonian numerals today, right? See if you can think about these questions. Come back when you have uh, some answers to, to, to uh, think about. Press pause now. Well, at first glance, glance you might pick Egyptian numerals as being, uh, Egyptian numerals being more like our modern Hindu Arabic numerals because they group in tens. Or you might pick Roman numerals since the symbols are simpler and, you're, and also because you're more familiar with it. And these are certainly both true, but the, the essential use of the place value structure in Babylonians uh, numerals ultimately makes it more like modern Hindu Arabic numerals than either Egyptian or Roman, Roman numerals. So my answer would be uh, overall Babylonian numerals are more like Hindu Arabic. Why do you think they chose a base of 60 and what are some advantages of base 60 over base 10? Well it was so long ago we really don't know why they chose a base of 60. 
One advantage of using a base of 60 is it has a lot of factors. And this certainly makes uh, certain types of arithmetic easier, some of the arithmetic that they did, some of it with fractions. Um, and so that could be one reason. Also notice that six groups of 60 is 360, which is quite close to the number of days in the year. That could have influenced their choice. We don't know. Uh, one of the advantages is also is that we've already seen is that you can write a large number with relatively few digits with a base that big. What are some advantages of a base 10 over base 60? A smaller base means fewer symbols to use. Two smaller bases results in getting a lot of digits for relatively small numbers. Place value was remarkably innovative insight. However, we surely completely abandoned Babylonian numerals today, right? Well, not exactly. While we don't directly use Babylonian num numbers anymore, we do use base 60 every day. Can you list where we do so? We still use a base of 60 in measuring time. 60 seconds equals one minute, and 60 minutes equals one hour. We also use 360 degrees for a full circle, and when we break down a degree as 60 minutes and a minute as 60 seconds, when we are measuring angles, both of these go directly back to ancient Babylonian numerals. Well, that's a quick introduction to Babylonian numerals. Let's talk about Mayan numerals in the next video.